How does one cell know to make a synapse with another cell when, they, when their parent cell bodies are a meter away? We don't know. There's an adaptability, there's a malleability, there's a plasticity capability in the brain that is unique to development. And a big focus of developmental neuroscience is figuring out what that is and how it works. Can we bottle it? <laughs> is there some way to figure out what's the molecular mechanism that makes your brain plastic? That could be the key to a whole bunch of diseases, neurological, psychiatric diseases, as well as aging. The reason that this team is well suited for this problem is that we have molecular genetic experts, Najib from Cell Biology Molecular Genetics, who's a transcriptomic expert, Peter Nemes, who's a proteomic expert. So now we're talking gene level to protein level. Josh Singer, who's a retinal physiologist and circuit connectomics expert. And then ourselves in our lab, um, who use high resolution imaging techniques also to investigate circuits and, and synaptic organization. Spanning a range from individual molecules all the way to whole brain areas and circuits. And that's something that an individual lab could never do. This is something that you need a multidisciplinary team to accomplish. If you want to understand how the brain works, and if you want to understand what goes awry during disease, then you really need to dig down to the level of molecules, and, and that's what we're um, doing in this project. So we literally turn back the hands of time to the point where embryonic stem cells are born, and, and we monitor how these embryonic stem cells differentiate to establish neural tissues. And then once the brain is forming, then we ask using Colenso's technologies with um, ultra-high-resolution microscopy, what really happens uh, between, um, between the neurons that were born from these embryonic stem cells. So my lab can determine what is present at what total amount in the entire neuron and the tissue. His team can determine spatially where the molecules are. We are exclusively focusing on providing the analytical framework to enable ultra-sensitive detection of proteins. One of the greatest challenges in this project is how you measure very small amounts of proteins that we can extract from, from particular regions of the brain. And uh, to this end is, is really where we had to build new instrumentation. The, the instrument was funded by Arnold Mabel Beckman Foundation, and which was great for me so to have experience with these type of instrument, which would be uh, unavailable on other sites. Although I'm a chemistry PhD student, this has been a great um, journey for me to really understand the biological aspect of the neuroscience. But the real question that, that I am interested in after that is, okay, how do these new proteins get incorporated into synapses? And how, how does the change in the proteome, change in the number of of species of proteins and abundance of proteins, how is that reflected in the changing architecture of connections between cells? The retina in your eye is like a little piece of brain. We don't really think of it that way, but it is. It's a bona fide piece of your brain that is forward facing, has over a hundred cell types organized into some really complicated circuits that take light from the world and transduce it into a pattern of signals that are going to go into your brain. If you disrupt this, the brain can no longer detect the appropriate signal to reset the diurnal cycle to the natural photo period. So we're speculating that these early test patterns of neural signaling and immediately after eye opening those visual inputs, those two forms of activity help to instruct the development of connections from the eye to the brain. Our research is very um, sort of nuts and bolts. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's basic science research dedicated to trying to understand essential molecular mechanisms that underlie how synapses are built, how they're maintained, and what happens to them when they fall apart in disease. That's what basic research is. It sort of lays a foundation for better understanding and better, better intervention in the clinic. You can't just jump into therapeutics without knowing something about the molecular organization of the process that you're trying to cure.